a lawyer came up to Jesus and asked him this question. He said to him, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your mind. This is the greatest commandment and the first. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. The most important thing in our lives is to know the love of God and to love him in return. This is our deepest calling. It's also our deepest desire, even if we're only dimly aware of it. St. Augustine said, Lord, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. We can never find ultimate happiness in the passing things of this world. This was the experience of Moses in the Old Testament. He was a shepherd in the wilderness looking after his sheep. Imagine him here in the wilderness of the Sussex Downs with the sheep behind me. And he had an encounter with God in the form of a bush that was aflame with fire. It kept burning and burning and burning, but it was never consumed. So Moses turned aside from the path he was on and went to see what was happening. And as he came to the bush, the Lord spoke to him by name. He said to him, Moses, Moses, take off your sandals, for the place you are standing on is holy ground. Moses had a profound experience of the presence of God. It changed everything. And he had to turn aside and to take off his shoes as a sign of his humility and of his worship. It's the same for us. Deep in our hearts, there is a longing for God, but we need to turn aside for a moment, to search for him, to make space for him, to pray, to worship. And we need to take off our shoes, to be honest about the things that need changing in our life, to say sorry for our sins and our wrongdoing, and to let go of the things that are damaging and harmful. It's impossible to love God as we need to without the help of Jesus Christ. He is our friend, our brother, our saviour. If we believe in him, he unites us with himself. He fills us with his Holy Spirit and he lifts us up to the Father in his own glorious prayer. If we put Jesus Christ in the center, everything else falls into place. It doesn't mean all our difficulties disappear, but we can make sense of them and we know how to move forward. One of my great heroes is St. Francis of Assisi. As a young man, he was trying to live the Christian life, but he didn't really know where life was taking him. One day, he visited a church with two friends. He found a Bible and he opened it at random. And his eyes fell upon the passage where Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, you must sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and then come and follow me. The words spoke to his heart and he felt with real conviction that Jesus was calling him to live a life of complete poverty and Francis found such joy and freedom in following Christ in that way and speaking about him to others. People used to say that when they met Francis, it was as if they were meeting Jesus himself. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to sell all your possessions and take to the streets like St. Francis. Every Christian has a unique vocation and a different way of living their faith. But I do hope that you can discover the joy that Francis found in following Christ. The love of Christ set him free, free to love God, free to love others. That freedom is something that we all long for, even if we will live it in different ways. And if we do discover it for ourselves, we'll want to share it with others too. Saint Catherine of Siena said, if you become who you are meant to be, you will set the world on fire. And then, at the end of our life, when we leave this world, we have the hope of sharing eternally 
in the fire of God's love, of seeing the glory that Moses saw in the burning bush and seeing the glory that shines from the face of Jesus Christ.